Joining us now is Sheitan Atigani with stories trending around the world. Hello, Sheitan. Hello, <laughs> Dr. Bati. It's always a pleasure seeing you. Good oh, morning. Yeah, good good you. morning, Ajay Suwa. Good morning, How are you Chaitan. doing this morning? Very well, thank you. And Rifai, good morning. How are you? <laughs> good morning. You're doing well. <laughs> You're doing very well. Very, very well. Fantabulous. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rufai. Good morning to you, viewers. We're starting What's Trending today. But no fewer than four beach resorts in Lagos State have been sealed off for contravening safety protocols introduced to flatten the coronavirus curve in the state. These beach houses were discovered by government officials over the weekend, violating COVID-19 guidelines and publicly aiding fund seekers. The Lagos State Safety Commission COVID-19 Enforcement Task Force, in conjunction with the State Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture and Waterways Authority, sealed the resorts on Tuesday during a visit to the Axis. Director General of the Safety Commission, Mr. Larry Mojola, who led the enforcement team, disclosed that he and his officials witnessed a flagrant disregard for social distancing with over 250 persons seen, without the, seen within the sealed premises without face masks. The facility had none of the health and safety measures prescribed by the government in place. Now, I mean, Nigerians are people that like to have a good time. They like to go out. They like Owan bears. They like to gather. And since they've not been able to do that, people are thinking maybe the next best thing is going to the beach. But 250 people, that's, a, that's quite a number. Indeed, it's a, it is a difficult time for everybody across the world, you know, to be locked up or locked down. That's the term, locked down, uh, because of this pandemic. Um, we have said... Often times that the reason we are seeing increased numbers is because we are increasing testing. But there are also many factors responsible for those increased numbers we're seeing. And one of that is because the virus is spreading, especially at community level. So we are increasing testing, but there are also new infections. Yes. And that's because largely people are not uh, maintaining those protocols and guidelines to ensure that we curb the spread of this virus. Uh, who doesn't like to have a good time? But there are sacrifices we have to make. You know, Aaron was asking, uh, Rufa was asking Aaron this morning during the COVID-19 pandemic update, when will Africa begin to see the curve, uh, the flattening of a curve? Yes. We haven't even seen the peak. We are yet to see the peak. And with behavior such as this, um, I don't know if we will see the peak anytime soon. Mm. Well, what has happened at the uh, beach uh, resorts in uh, Elisha, right? Yes. In Amu 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 Is it Elisha or Lashe? I think it's Beach, yes. Amu 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 uh, you will know because uh, <laughs> I'm the beach. you are the guys that go to the beaches. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, yes. it's as follows. You know, what this demonstrates is the uh, gross irresponsibility that we have seen across levels. Uh, the high and mighty in Nigeria not uh, respecting the guidelines, not following the protocols. And the ordinary people also not following it. And that's the, perhaps the biggest challenge that we have with regard to COVID-19. Because many Nigerians, having gone over, having survived the initial fear and panic mm. uh, about COVID-19, people more or less have re, you know, returned to their normal lives. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't even believe uh, that COVID-19 exists. So either in the markets or by the roadside uh, or at the playgrounds, you see that, you know, people are dropping the ball. Yeah. And they are not listening to the presidential task force that says, look, the best way we can beat this uh, COVID-19 uh, scourge is to take responsibility. So nobody is taking responsibility, whether they are high up or low down. Mm -hmm. Now, in this particular case, uh, the head of the uh, COVID-19 task force in Lagos uh, says those beach resorts have been sealed off. Now, I don't think it's enough to seal off those beach resorts. Beach resorts are not owned, uh, owned by uh, ordinary people. Mm. Uh, they belong to, you know, privileged persons yes, the wealthy. Uh, who, you know, the, at weekends invite people like you. you know. uh, no, I don't <laughs> get invited. Don't get invited. I mean, we yeah, can, yeah. I, no, I, know, don't, I don't get invited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They invite you and, you know, yeah, you, know, uh, you know, people go there to just have fun. Have a good time. Mm. I think that the owners of those beach resorts should be named. If it was enough to arrest Funke Akindele, yes. that's her name, the, mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, Akindele, the, actress. the prominent actress, you know, for having a birthday party in her home. Yes. So who are the owners of these beach resorts or the particular beach resort that invited 
about 250 yeah, persons. Mm. The person or the persons mm. should be named and they should also be charged to court so that there will be fairness. No because the job of that task yes. force is to enforce the law. And Lagos State has an infectious diseases uh, law. Yeah. Okay, so if there has been a contravention mm. and that law, to the best of our knowledge, has not been abrogated by the Lagos State House of Assembly. So the owners of those beach resources should be named because you will be surprised that the owners are prominent persons in Lagos, right? Yeah. Uh, so there is a cover-up. I like the idea that, uh, you know, they went there, they sealed up the place, you know, but the cover-up side is something that should be addressed, mm -hmm. particularly by the incident commander himself, Baba Jide Sonwolu, who is uh, governor of uh, Lagos State. That's what I need to add. What about you, Rufai? Do you think the owners of these beach houses should be reprimanded? Yes, <clears throat> they should be. Nobody's above the law. At least that's the country we, we show and the country we built, or the country we, we want to show out there that we've built. Nobody's above the law. I mean, uh, when Funke Akidele was arrested, let's not forget the fact that a top politician, in fact, I think uh, governorship aspirant has on point too, had to face the law before he was let, let go. So if those people can be sanctioned, uh, for violating COVID rules, then why can't we get these beach owners to come out? They must, they must take account. And please, everybody they put out of that beach, at that, or that beach resort, they should all isolate and go for COVID-19 tests. Because there might be asymptomatic people amongst them that they don't know. So contact tracing, their friends, their family members, if they say they got out 250 people from there, I think the contact tracing should be about 10 or 15,000 people close to them or they met in the course of the week, they should all go and take a COVID-19 test and self-isolate and monitor them because they might spread this. And let's not forget, when the COVID-19 resurgence started in America, it was through people that attended pool parties in various parts of Florida and the likes. So it's so easy to spread in that community. So all those people get their names down, not just closing down the beach, get their names down, contact trace them, let them get the test, also self-isolate them, and contact trace people they have met so that we do not put these people back into society and increase the numbers of COVID. Mm -hmm. That's my concern. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, look yes, at me. Rufai, you are right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, she says she doesn't get invited to Dr. beach yeah, parties. I don't look at me. <laughs> No, okay, Look so at you, me are, I'll you be don't honest. go to beach parties. I mean, I do go to the beach, and the truth is, since the lockdown started, I have been to the beach once, but when I went, it was just four of us, and we were very careful. We observed the safety precautions, but I'm hearing 250 people. It's, it's not the same. I, I did go with people that I already have direct yeah, contact with. Yeah, because I saw those pictures. Oh, my God. Instagram don't tell them to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Big brother next. is watching. <laughs> Moving on to our next story now. What was supposed to be a hearing on the controversy rocking the Nigerian social insurance trust fund turned into another political drama at the National Assembly when Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Ngige engaged in a war of words with James Faleke, who represents the Ikeja constituency at the House of Representatives. The minister, after being questioned, said he was older than all the members of the panel, adding that the only person close to him was Faleke. The minister went ahead to compare himself to former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu. On his own, Faleke accused the minister of having never won any election in a credible manner. Let's take a look who are like my junior brothers, except for like they say they're up to 60, I don't know. I'm 60 plus. Uh -huh. So you are near my age, but I'm at least seven years older than you, I'm sure. I'm the same age with your mentor in Lagos, Asiwaju. <laughs> and I was governor with him at the same time. He was a senator, but I was a senator. I'm a two-time minister, isn't a two-time minister. But he won all his elections very well. No problem about that. Just like you won your own in Kogi State very well. Yes. And uh, you are now the deputy governor and governor of Kogi State. Mr. Mr. Minister, please respond. Uh, I'm responding, my friend. If you have me, I'll have you ten I, times. I won. I'm a Lagos boy. I'm a Lagos boy. You are just a small boy in Lagos. Uh -uh. Look at, look at this boy. Mushin boy is talking to a, v, a VI boy. I live in Victoria Island. Look at Mushi boy. From Kogio. <laughs> you are, you are, you are Oborobo. Just go. I don't get time for you. Kilo share. Nigerians, as you can imagine, went 
crazy over that video. The first tweet there says, Ngige's dressing down of Faleke's highlights the I am older than you excuse, which people in official places pass up used to pass up responsibility. I'd have understood if Ngige disagreed with Faleke on the basis of things like competence or moral presence, but age in an official context? Mm. The next tweet there reads, age, rank, seniority, political petty, pettiness, allusion to Faleke's mental and needless comparisons, classism, silly social hierarchy, equals tasteless, mushy versus VI comparison. Both, both pointed out their electoral shenanigans and all signs of a system of mediocrity, anyhowness, and zero accountability. The last tweet there reads, Ingege is a small mind. You can't be small and still have a little mind. I'm a Lagos boy. You may be in the Senate for 100 terms, minister 35 years. You will still find yourself struggling to be what Tinubu is. When your career was dwindling, you ran to him and he gave you his platform. Well, Nigerians did have a lot to say. I mean, that video just makes a joke. It makes a mockery of what that panel should have been. Indeed. This was supposed to look into alleged corruption uh, in the Nigeria Social Investment Trust Fund, Trust Fund yes. Yes. I think. MSI, yeah. And the sacking or the suspension Fashion. of top management officials in the, in the, in the um, agency. And then it turned out to be this. I think Nigerians have said it all. And I did mention, I think that there's a need for the president. He had called, he had a meeting with the leadership of the National Assembly recently. And, you know, the focus of that meeting, the fulcrum of it was for um, cohesion between the arms of government, where you do have the APC as the leading party with these members. And, but increasingly, we are beginning to see uh, members of the executive versus uh, th that of the legislature, like I said earlier. I mean, barely weeks, we've seen Festus Skiamu versus National Assembly. We have seen uh, Minister Pabio versus the National Assembly. We have seen Ingege versus uh, Faleke, who is a member of the National Assembly and a member of the APC. Uh, it looks very disturbing. And, and, and I mean, anybody should be disgusted by that. Well, I think the matter is as follows. Uh, the video shows only one part of the encounter. James Faleke, as a member of the, um, of the panel, interacting with uh, um, Dr. Ngige, asked specific, raised specific questions. One of the questions he raised is that, one, Dr. Ngige, as Minister of uh, Labor and uh, uh, okay. Employment and Productivity, manipulated the project of the ministry. He made that point. He raised the question that, in terms of the uh, uh, operations of the NSITF, it was not fair to all parties concerned. These were specific questions. He raised the question that in terms of recruitment, most of the persons that uh, Dr. Chris Ngigi personally approved their appointment were mostly from Anambra State. And he asked him, why is it that it's only Anambra people that you are interested in? James Faleke went for that and then said that, look, he looked at the list. He had the document with him that on that list, there were 12 Ngigis. Who are these Ngigis? Are they members of his family or his cousins or persons that are qualified mm. for recruitment? Then he went for that and alleged that, look, Dr. Ngige, there was an insurance broker that was engaged by the Ministry of uh, Employment and Productivity and it was your wife that wrote the memo recommending and approving the engagement of that insurance broken firm. And then, of course, he brought up the issue of politics. He said, look, Dr. Ngige, uh, will you say that you are minister today uh, because of your contributions to the APC or just because, you know, you had uh, that opportunity? Now, Dr. Ngige avoided all the key questions. Uh, as they say in football, he left the ball, he went for the leg. Mm -hmm. And started playing the age card, the political card. I, I think that's unfortunate. And I hope that at some point, that panel will still get him to respond to the, questions, the questions raised by James Palike. Yeah. Because he dodged the questions. And I think that the panel itself must be diligent in discharging his responsibilities. To get answers to those questions, probing questions that were raised. That's what 
we are interested in yeah. as Nigerians. Yes. Now, all this point about I'm older than you by seven years. Mushin, uh, Victoria, uh, Victoria, I lived in Mushin. I lived in uh, in yeah. uh, you in uh, VI. In, uh, VI. Yeah. Uh, it's totally immaterial. Exactly. All of us living in either in Mushin or Victoria Island, we breathe the same air. You know, uh, given to us by God. So that's the we're, all the point. we're all Nigerian. Yeah, it's, it's the same uh, state address. Whether, whether it was uh, uh, the colleague of uh, Ashwa Jubola Tunubu, that was not the issue. Yeah. Ashwa Jubola Tunubu was not the subject. Paleke mm -hmm. himself did not refer to Ashwa Jubola Tunubu. So that panel was getting to still respond to those questions. I've always known uh, Dr. Chris Ngige, you know, as a professional, as a medical doctor you know, as a prominent politician. I didn't know that he also has the talents of a comedian. <laughs> so, but the good news is that, uh, as I said yesterday, yeah. uh, it's nice for Nigerians to be given this opportunity mm. and they should continue to uh, broadcast these interrogations live uh, so that Nigerians can see the quality of, of the people that they vote for again and again and that they put in important uh, positions. I think it's sad in a country where we are very brilliant and articulate and intelligent people who would like to make a contribution. That is uh, what we see on television mm -hmm. uh, is a division uh, two category leading Nigeria. Rufai, can you chime in here, please? The quality of leadership. <laughs> I'm a VI boy. <laughs> I just want are to you? Say, are you? Are you? <laughs> I just want to say the record. Yasha is not between. <laughs> is Yasha is not between Mushin and VI. Okay. Okay. Somewhere in between. Who is from Mushan here? I'm, Mushan. I am a proper VI boy. I'm an Who is islander. Who from here? <laughs> I'm an islander. But, Dr. Bati, you said a lot great. I'll quote Horace Walpole on this. He said, the world is tragedy to those who feel. And comedy. And comedy to those who think. Who think. So, at first, because I feel this is a tragedy to me, I feel very sad that Nigeria has been, you know, put at this level where we don't have quality conversations in the public space any longer, and it's all classism and age and seniority complex. So I feel that it's tragedy to me. But because I think it becomes comedy, and you know why? Let's even interrogate the processes that brought these people to power. Let's interrogate the electionary processes. Let's interrogate the antecedents. Let's interrogate their value systems. Let's interrogate what they've been able to do for the development of the people, how they have transformed the lives of people. Let's interrogate what moves them. Is it a Nigerian dream or just to come and loot and steal just like that? And when you interrogate that, when you think, you will not be surprised that despite specific and salient questions were asked, the response was about Moshi and Victoria Island and I'm more senior to you. You will not be surprised that despite that there were very salient issues raised about tribalism, there was no answer given to them. It was only about how well successful I am. I've been governor. I've been two-time minister. So it speaks volume. And that's why it's a comedy to me, because I think deeply about it. But was it not the same minister that said uh, in 2019, we have so many doctors, if they want to leave, we can leave? Oh, I did. So, I, I, so I, I don't think it's the first gaffe we are seeing I, from I, I, Minister I, I, I just I just why, why, that's, that's the reason. You yes. have just hit the nail on the head. Yeah. If in this country, the first time. somebody can say doctors can go they if they surplus. want to go, mm -hmm. they are surplus. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's a good place to end this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you again. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> you have done well today. <laughs>